Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can talk about the characteristics of a husband with avoidant personality traits. So I've had many videos kind of similar to this, looking at both husbands and wives with narcissistic traits or psychopathic traits. This one's looking at a husband with avoidant traits. Now this video is focused on the husband and wife relationship as I talk about these signs, but many if not all of these signs could also apply to any long-term partnership, whether or not the couple was married. So I'll answer this question by reviewing the 10 signs of a husband with avoidant personality traits. Now of course there are a lot of signs that reveal avoidant personality traits. I'm really focusing on behaviors that could be directly observable by the wife. Now avoidant personality and avoidant personality disorder are different constructs. We could think of avoidant personality as being on a continuum, so it could be subclinical, so a level of traits that wouldn't necessarily indicate treatment, like treatment may not be necessary, all the way to clinical, where treatment would be indicated, like treatment by a mental health counselor. With avoidant personality disorder, we're talking about something that's categorical, not so much on a continuum. So somebody either has avoidant personality disorder or they don't. This particular personality disorder, this mental disorder, is a cluster C personality disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. This is considered the anxious fearful cluster and this also contains dependent personality disorder and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. So taking a quick look at avoidant personality disorder before I get to the 10 signs here, we see seven symptom criteria for this disorder. We see avoids occupational activities involving significant interpersonal contact due to fears of criticism, disapproval, or rejection. We see they're unwilling to get involved with people unless they're certain of acceptance. So if they're going to be dealing with somebody, they want to make sure that person will accept them. There's a fear of rejection here. They show restraint in intimate relationships due to fears of shame or ridicule. They're preoccupied with fears of receiving criticism or rejection in social situations. They're inhibited in new interpersonal situations due to feelings of inadequacy. They consider themselves inferior to others, socially inept and personally unappealing. And they're usually reluctant to take personal risks or to engage in any new activities because those activities could prove to be embarrassing. So as I go through these 10 signs, we'll see a lot of these features from avoidant personality disorder reflected in the signs. Now getting started with the signs, when I use the term husband here, I'm talking about the husband with avoidant personality traits. For the sake of expediency, I'm just going to use the term husband. Sign number one, the husband over-processes perfunctory conversations and serious conversations. So as people navigate relationships, they have various conversations. Some of them are pretty ordinary and some of them are considered a little bit more serious. To the husband with avoidant personality traits, these are really treated in the same way. Both, again, are over-processed. The husband kind of obsesses about those conversations. Now, everybody does this to some extent, particularly when somebody's encountering a so-called important person, right? So if you work for an organization and the owner or the president of that company comes into the office and it's unexpected, you may want to say the right thing right? You don't want to embarrass yourself. You want to make the perfect amount of eye contact because there's something to lose in theory, right? You could make a bad impression and that could be negative in terms of your job outlook. Or if you made a good impression, there'd be something to gain, right? So that type of stress, again, with the so-called important person is what the husband feels frequently, often with almost everybody he interacts with. So after the husband has an interaction with somebody, if he's there with his wife, as they're walking away, as the husband and wife are walking away, he might say to the wife, was that okay what I said? Or I hope that she understood that I was being friendly, right? Trying to make sure that he did the right thing in that conversation and double checking that with the wife. Expending a lot of energy and going over the details when most people really wouldn't worry that much about that particular conversation. Sign number two has to do with comorbidity. Now, if somebody has avoidant personality disorder, and some of the time, if they have avoidant personality traits, they're going to be more likely to have mental disorders like depression, major depressive disorder, and substance use disorder. 
we also see with avoidant personality disorder an increased risk of having dependent personality disorder, which of course is interesting because both are in the same cluster, cluster C. Now, 30 to 40 percent of individuals with avoidant personality disorder also have social anxiety disorder. Now, social anxiety disorder and avoidant personality disorder are really conceptualized in a few different ways. One way to think about them is they're on a continuum. So social anxiety disorder is kind of on the low end and avoidant personality disorder is on the more severe end of symptoms. Another way to look at it is they're quite similar, but avoidant personality disorder has a lack of insight that we wouldn't expect to see with social anxiety disorder. And still another way would be that social anxiety disorder is situationally activated. So if somebody is speaking in public or something like that, they may have symptoms, but the rest of the time they may not. Whereas avoidant personality disorder, we see something more constant. The symptoms are always there. Now I've explored this distinction in depth in other videos. I just want to make two important points about this particular comorbidity. So the first point is they can be comorbid. So somebody can have social anxiety disorder and avoidant personality disorder at the same time. That might be kind of unusual. Most practitioners would not do that, but technically somebody could have that. Another point here is that panic is actually not technically part of social anxiety disorder or avoidant personality disorder, but it's often present. So the wife might say, well, my husband doesn't have one of those disorders because he doesn't have panic. Actually, that's not required for the diagnosis. Now, if the husband does have panic attacks, then we use the panic attack specifier. So it's the disorder and then the phrase with panic attacks after that. Every diagnosis in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual can be modified with this specifier except panic disorder because panic attacks are part of panic disorder. Sign number three is that there may be some signs of vulnerable narcissism with this husband. Now, there is some overlap here, but there are many key differences as well. For example, if somebody has avoidant personality traits, they have difficulty expressing anger. Typically, people with vulnerable narcissism do not. Also, we see with the husband with avoidant personality traits, he's not typically arrogant. He doesn't have a sense of entitlement. He's not manipulative. He doesn't believe that he's special. All those components are missing, and of course, they would be expected with vulnerable narcissism. Even still, vulnerable narcissism does have more overlap with avoidant personality disorder than any other personality disorder, including borderline personality disorder. So this is fairly surprising, but this is what we see repeatedly in the research literature. Sign number four, the husband has anxious and fearful attachment, both associated, of course, with a negative self-image. And we see related to this, the husband is less likely to divorce. Avoidant personality disorder is actually the only personality disorder associated with a lower divorce rate when compared to people without a personality disorder. So all of the personality disorders carry an increased risk of divorce, but avoidant personality disorder does not. So on the subject of attachment, one of the questions I hear quite a bit about this would be, does the husband have avoidant attachment? This seems to make sense. You have avoidant personality traits. It makes sense that you have avoidant attachment. Well, it may seem like it, but not always. Avoidant attachment is when someone expects relationships to be unreliable. So they dismiss or reject others. So in a sense, they're being proactive. They don't trust the relationship and they're going to reject first. Also, this type of attachment is less focused on emotions. Now, people with anxious attachment tend to expect relationships to be frustrating and unpredictable. So they present with escalated levels of distress to get their attachment needs met. So we see here an overlap between avoidant personality characteristics and dependent personality characteristics. Both avoidant and anxious attachment styles are considered insecure, right? So that part lines up with avoidant personality characteristics. But the positive self-image component of the avoidant dismissive attachment style, sometimes it's also called dismissive, that doesn't really seem to fit with this husband. Now, while I'm on the topic of attachment, one unusual fact I found in the research literature that kind of surprised me, I wasn't really necessarily looking for it, but I stumbled upon it. If somebody has a fearful attachment style, like we would expect the husband in this scenario would have, we see that sleep problems due to worrying about nightmares are usually markedly increased. So not just general sleep problems, but specifically having difficulty getting to sleep because 
concerns over having a nightmare. So just something interesting that's connected with that attachment style. Again, I didn't expect to find, but I thought it was best to put it under this particular sign, sign number four. So moving to sign number five, we see that the husband has a fear of being laughed at. This phobia is known as gelatophobia, and it's present the vast majority of the time with individuals who have social anxiety disorder or avoidant personality disorder, so much so that many believe that it should be one of the symptom criteria for both of these disorders. So what this means is that the husband sees other people laughing and immediately believes that they're laughing about him or at him. So when he sees other people laughing, he feels rejected and ashamed. So in a way, this is kind of an idea of reference too, right? So the husband is looking at a situation and believing it's about him when there's really not a lot of evidence to support that. Sign number six is that the husband was the victim of parental neglect. We see that people with avoidant personality disorder often had parents who were less affectionate, more rejecting, and less encouraging than people who do not have avoidant personality disorder. So the husband is more likely to report a history of neglect and lower care. Moving to sign number seven, here we see affective instability. Now this is interesting because this is one of the symptom criteria for borderline personality disorder but yet we see it here with avoidant personality traits. It's not as pronounced with avoidant personality disorder as it is with borderline, but it's still there. It's still a significant factor. There is a theory about a relationship between avoidant personality disorder and schizoid personality disorder, which is a cluster A personality disorder. And one of the things I find interesting is that if avoidant personality is linked to affective instability, that makes it seem much different than schizoid personality disorder because with that disorder, we know there's not a lot of instability around emotions at all. There's actually a high degree of stability. So this is just one of the many reasons why I think there isn't really a strong relationship between avoidant and schizoid personality disorders. Moving to sign number eight, we see that the husband has a strong desire for interpersonal contact. So we really see like opposing forces here. There's this fear of humiliation, rejection and embarrassment on one side, but then the other side, the husband wants to be close to other people. We see the husband is upset when he's in a one-on-one -on -one conversation and that conversation is interrupted because those conversations are really just few and far between for the husband, so he values that time. He's highly distracted if the other person in that conversation looks away. So if he's talking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, and that other person looks over the husband's shoulder, clearly looking at something behind him, the husband's gonna take that as a sign of rejection. The person's not paying attention properly, and that's because the husband is bad, right? He immediately jumps to that theory. Instead of the person's just extroverted or that's just their mannerism, they tend to look around and they talk, that's not what he's gonna conclude. He's gonna go right to, again, he's bad, he's unworthy, and this just offers more proof that his theory is correct. Moving to sign number nine. Here we see the husband has trouble recognizing fear in facial expressions, but there's no difference in his ability to recognize other emotions like anger, disgust, sadness, surprise, and happiness. We also see no speed difference as well. So this husband can recognize facial expressions just as quickly as other people. He just has trouble with recognizing the fearful expressions. Now the husband with avoidant personality traits seems sensitive, and for the most part, he is. But missing the fear component is really something that can cause problems in a marital relationship. For example, the husband and wife are walking down the street and they encounter a stranger who starts asking them questions. The wife is frightened, but because it may not be socially acceptable to scream and run away, she kind of looks at the husband, right? An expression of fear, trying to communicate to him that she wants this conversation with the stranger to end, right? She wants to move on, to keep walking. But the husband doesn't get it, so he keeps on engaging the stranger. He doesn't recognize that fearful expression. And after that discussion with the stranger is over, when the husband and wife are walking away from that, the wife may offer him an angry expression, right? To express her disapproval with him missing that sign, right? So again, missing fearful expressions can really cause problems. So moving to sign number 10, this is self-blame. The husband has a lot of this. Rejection means the husband is bad. Again, I talked about that before. 
he hides feelings of shame, sadness, and anger by suppressing emotional expression. This is another reason why avoidant personality disorder is confused with schizoid personality disorder. Now, because the husband fails to express emotions, this can really come at a cost for him. If the husband fails to show amusement when this is expected as a socially appropriate response, he is thought of as being less agreeable and less extroverted. When he fails to show sadness when it would be appropriate, he is judged as lacking compassion. The irony here, of course, is that the suppression of emotions leads to the rejection in some cases. So we have the suppression leading to the rejection, the rejection leading to feelings of shame, sadness, and anger, and that leading to a desire to suppress those emotions. So we have kind of a vicious cycle that forms when talking about the husband with avoidant personality traits. So those are the 10 signs. Avoidant personality disorder and social anxiety disorder actually respond fairly well to treatment when the husband comes in to receive treatment. But of course, that's the problem. The disorder prevents the husband from seeking treatment in the first place. And this is really the dilemma that's faced very often by people who have avoidant personality disorder and the mental health counseling community. Obviously, counselors want to treat these individuals to help them, but the avoidant personality traits prevent the individuals from coming into treatment. So we end up in a situation where we are only seeing the outcomes for the people, of course, that showed up and received treatment. So we don't know what's happening with people that don't. And there's a belief, of course, that there are many, many people out there who have avoidant personality traits, including the disorder, who don't receive treatment and continue to suffer. I know whenever I talk about topics like avoidant personality disorder, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this discussion of avoidant personality traits to be interesting. Thanks for watching.